Hey fellow Rotors, welcome to the Fellow Rotor Express's How to Play video. This is going to be a special series on how to play Star Wars Rebellion. And consider this video to be kind of a, like a part zero. This is really kind of a how to use this series. And just a little bit of an overview on some of the setups and some things that you may not have realized about uh, obscure rules references during setup things that might be easy to uh, forget, and just a couple other references and terminologies. It's taken a lot to put this series of videos together, and I've definitely read very thoroughly the rules reference book and the starting, and come up with at least 11 different topics, which we're gonna cover in more than 10 videos. Uh, also, if you want to see these as they come out, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell that's right next to the subscribe button so that you'll get an email every time that we upload one of these videos. We'll also be going over the base game of Rebellion and the Rise of the Empire, the expansion to it, and talking about some of the differences. There may even be completely different videos for Rise of the Empire if the rules are extremely different. Also, another thing you'll want to notice is that from video to video, I may reiterate certain types of rules when it comes to, say, moving units or moving the Death Star, so, or maybe even combat and that kind of thing. So, whenever you're looking for, you can search for that certain topic and you should be able to find it in one of the videos. So let's go ahead and get started. So here are our starting factions. You can definitely see how the Empire has way more units than the tiny Rebel Resistance. And that's because this is an asymmetrical kind of strategy game in the Star Wars universe. And it's absolutely amazing. It's like Star Wars in a box. So you can see here that the Rebels hardly have any resources to work with. And the Empire has, well, an Empire. Now I'm going to show you the differences for the Rise of the Empire expansion. So, for the Imperials, it's pretty drastic because you don't start off with a Death Star, no. You start off with a Death Star under construction, and then you take four of your TIE Fighters and put it with that Death Star under construction. Oh, but wait, you also get another Imperial Stormtrooper unit to put with them, and then you can go ahead and add two ground tanks, and two TIE Strikers, and all you're going to take away is one ATST, And that's how you get your starting units for the Rise of the Empire expansion for the Empire. And now for the Rebels, you just take away one of the Rebel Troopers and add a Vanguard in. And then you take away two ships, one Y-Wing and one X-Wing, and you add in one U-Wing. Shafted once again for the Rebels. So the Empire in the expansion starts off with more units, and the Rebels start off with slightly less. Moving on to the way the board looks, we're going to take a look at one area of the board, and you'll be able to notice that there are several different colored lines. So the first thing we're going to talk about is this line right here. This is an impassable zone, which means that if uh, you've got your Star Destroyer over here, it can't get through here. It's going to have to go around to here, and then it's going to have to go here in another turn, and if it wants to get to Endor, it has to come all the way over here. So it's going to take one, two, three turns at least to be able to get these troops over there. So this is an impassable zone. The orange line separates regions. And in each region, you're gonna have four sectors. Each one's going to have a planet and the space around that planet. The planet may or may not have a build icon and a loyalty marker section. So this is considered uh, more of an outer rim planet. It doesn't have anything it can build and it doesn't have loyalty. A uh, place like Bespin, however, can build units regarding these symbols right here and this tiny little number, which refers to the number one space on the build queue, and then a loyalty marker where you'll be able to place either Imperial or Rebel loyalty. Coruscant always starts off 
with Imperial loyalty because that's where the Imperials start off at and the Imperials are always going to want to sit on the side of the board where Coruscant is and the Rebel player is always going to want to sit on the opposite side of the board where everything looks upside down to them except for their objectives marker pile. Even the Rebel base is upside down for them. But it's easier to get over here when you're the Rebels and you're on this side. Now, let's talk about the beginning placement of the Rebels and the Empire. In the starter game, it tells you exactly where to place your units, but in an advanced game, you get to place your units in a special way. And I'm going to show you all the possible starting locations for the Empire and the Rebels. On the right side of the board where the build queues are, the Empire has a slightly better chance of having more forces because they can start off on Corellia, Sullust, Mustafar, and Rhodia. Whereas the Rebels have three areas they can start off, Bothawai, Naboo, and Ryloth. And on the left side of the board, the Empire can start off on Maichito, Mandalore, and Salakami. Salukami. I am reading this upside down. And then the Rebels have the possibility of Mon Calamari and Kashik. Oh god, hope that you get Mon Calamari because that is such a powerful planet to start off with. What this means is that the Rebels are, chances are, gonna have a spread out influence over the galaxy, and the Empire have the possibility of having two different wedges that kind of split the board into thirds for them to explore and for the Rebels to try and hide and do their subjugation missions from. It's also important to note that for the Rebel players, you don't have to start your troops off on a planet that is loyal to the Rebellion, you can actually start off on a neutral planet like Dathomir, or on a planet that has resources like Ord Mantel. It's also important to note that for the Rebel player starting off, you should only place Rebels in the Rebel base and on one other planet, so don't try to spread them out. I believe that's against the rules. Oh, and something I forgot. Each region is going to have four sectors, and of course that means four planets and the space around them. Well, that's all for this introductory video to our mini-series on how to play Star Wars Rebellion. Be sure and check out our other videos, which are going to cover everything from just these action cards all the way to the complex battle system. So thank you for checking this out. Hope that you'll like and subscribe and stay tuned for more on how to play Star Wars Rebellion. Check you next time.